Hello and welcome to the Racers HQ podcast. I'm your host, Matt Murphy, and joining me on the line tonight is our dedicated co-host, Pat Mulry. Pat, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, Matt. How are you doing? I am just hunky-dory. Thank you for asking. Uh, We've got an awesome show tonight. This is going to be our 2023 year in review uh, with a little awards show at the end. But before we get to all the fun bits... Uh, let's just see what's been happening in, in our worlds, in our garages. So, Pat, what what you been up to, man? So, uh, you know, progress continues on uh, Miku. We I finished, uh, last weekend, I finished the base coat of paint. So the whole thing is in uh, white now and uh, preparing for the, uh, the graphics to come on it. I've been working on that a little bit this week, trying to get some... Um, bids and estimates for for the graphics package nice uh, yeah finished up finished up you know on the mechanical side it's kind of odds and ends we've like finished up some of the wiring stuff and um i think i don't remember if last time if i had finished up the i think i'd finished up the door bars maybe or mm-hmm. was just about to yeah. so those are done everything's painted on the on all of that now um pretty much everything's wired up except for just a couple last little couple of things um so yeah, I mean, we're I I want to get it painted. Um I'd really like to get the graphics package completed before we put it on track just cuz so I don't have to clean it up again before oh, yeah. you know doing the final graphics, but if you know, if it turns out that we end up going out before that's all done, then that's just how it'll be and then we'll clean it up again before we finish up. So Are but, you working with like a no. local sign shop or anything for the graphics or what what's your solution there? No, actually, I have not found a local sign shop that I'm really very excited about, um, mm-hmm. unfortunately. So um, I've used one in Indianapolis before that does a lot. I mean, no surprise, like oh, they're sure. on gas. I mean, on Gasoline Alley, not like on the track, but there's a street now right mm-hmm. off the track called Gasoline Alley. Um, so they do a lot of motorsports um, graphics. They even actually one of the pictures looks like they actually do wraps on um, IndyCar Indy cars now, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay. But they've been doing that for for decades. In fact, some of the graphics that are were on the car in the past were were from them. And then I've bid out a couple other places. There's a bunch of them in um, in Salem, Indiana, which I think is sort of a, a hub of uh, like dirt track racing, maybe. Okay. Um, so there's some places in Salem. One in no surprise. One in Mooresville, North Carolina, um, home of you know NASCAR. Um, so they do a lot of that kind of stuff, and then a couple of others. So I've probably got five or six different bids out right now, and they're kind of all over the place. One uh, helpful tip for um, for our listeners is that um, some of the graphics that I had needed a little bit of work um, that's beyond my, my capability. In Illustrator is very lo- very limited, um, mm-hmm. more than it used to be just from lack of use not that it was ever really very good but um two thumbs up for uh fiverr for that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um uh like you know i sent it off and uh you know just put a bid up and said you know i'll pay 15 dollars, and this is what i need like i need these paths cleaned up and this masked off and um and this you know this image cleaned up and uh, i'll pay 15 dollars and like you know, six minutes later, I had someone who was like, you know, I'll take that job. And I'm sure what I was asking was like probably five minutes of work for someone who right. actually knows what they're doing with Illustrator. But for 15, like I'm, you know, glad and paid her, you know, a $5 tip on top of that. Um, and like, nice. you know, it's, that's an easy $20 for stuff like that, you know? Um, and it got me exactly what I needed to be able to send off to, to the companies, you know, so that they can, you know, print and cut the, um, the numbers and the graphics and all of that. So very cool. Yeah. And I got a, I got a bid for uh, wrapping the entire car with our graphics package. Cause I thought, you know, while we're at it, let's just see what that, what that would run. Mm-hmm. Um, that actually is, you know, a, a joint here in town. Cause I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ship off a, a wrap mm-hmm. and then try and install that myself. There's no mm-hmm. way I'm going through that brain damage. Um, would you like to k- take a guess what uh, one whole car wrap costs in the dallas fort worth metropolitan area at least the one bid that i got fifty five hundred dollars 
Oh, that's a little high. Oh, it was sorry. only thirty three hundred dollars. Oh wow! Okay, it's not bad. No, but it's um, you know, about uh, three thousand dollars more than the graphics package from just you know from right. buying the individual vinyl stickers, working with the paint. So yeah, I think yeah. we'll go with the individual vinyl stickers and work with the paint. Yeah, that might be too racy if we showed up with a professionally wrapped car. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So, but I'm hoping Rachel and I went out on. Monday night or Tuesday night, I can't remember, and tried to um, uh, do some of the uh, the work, like tracing some images onto the side of the car by oh, hand, yeah. kind of working off of a template. And um, like we got done and she looked at me and she's like, this isn't going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. Like this, these graphics are really cool and we want them to look crisp and nice. And like, you know, like some of the stuff, you know, some of the stuff is like semicircular. Mm-hmm. Well, like you want a semicircle to have sharp edges and be semicircular mm-hmm. and not like, you know, a janky fourth grade production of, you know, or town. Yeah. So, um, have you tried using a projector? No, I don't have a projector. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good idea. Oh yeah. That's what the graphic or the uh, graffiti guys do all the time for the big murals. Oh yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. No, I don't have a projector. And frankly, I don't have the space to um, to project it to get the whole mm-hmm. car on there anyway. Yeah. Or even just the part of the car, because it'd have to be, I imagine at the size that we're looking at, your throw distance would have to be 10 or 15 feet away, right? Yeah, probably so. Yeah. So yeah. we don't have that sort of space available to us right now. But uh, that's a good. that's good to know. I didn't know that that's how they do that. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then there's this other system where they put like random, uh, they paint random kind of just squiggly marks all over the wall. And I think they scan that and then somehow sync it up with their uh, graphics software. And then they can paint it like paint by block instead of paint the whole thing at a time. uh, That makes sense. Yeah. Kind of like maps it out, I guess. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. A bunch of high tech artists. Yeah, well, nice, we're not man. very high tech when it comes to that. Well, good luck. That's uh, that's exciting. I'm glad you're being, you know, having some sort of scrutiny on those uh, big circles or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think we're still, you know, really on track for Barber. So I'm excited for that race. That's Got awesome. The hotel man. rooms booked, ready to go. Boom, I like it. Very cool. Um, well, I had a little bit of a How win. In the, yeah, I had a win in the garage. Um. <laughs> So I took out my dashboard to add the dash bar. I thought I could get away with just like no dash at all. And come to find out, you still have to mount stuff to something, right? Like all the electronics got to go somewhere. I still need a, you know, a dashboard for all my switches and whatnot. So um, I've been, you know, kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do there. I built out an ABS plastic like center uh, console you know, right in front yeah. of the shift, right in front of the shifter there. Yeah. And it was the same shape as everything else I'd done in the past. And so that, that looked okay, but it was kind of flimsy. And I still didn't, didn't have anywhere to put like my ECU and, you know, all the relays and fuse boxes and everything. And so, um, I was, I Things thought to myself, marginal importance. Yeah. Yeah. Important stuff. You don't want just like floating around or all slapped together with a, you know, zip tie. <laughs> so, um, I went looking around town for some aluminum, didn't find what I was looking for. I wanted something with like the 063 thickness. Mm-hmm. Um, and most stuff I could find was like half that. And so um, I immediately got online. For those playing at home. Yeah. 14 gauge. Is that what that does? Okay. Yeah. That's nice. 063 is 14 gauge. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know how any of that works, I guess. I'll figure it out eventually. So I get on now Amazon. I, have, I usually have to, I usually have to look at a chart on the, uh, the interwebs, mm-hmm. but um because I was also in the aluminum buying process recently, I think I think 063 is 14 gauge. Okay, I think that's nice. right in aluminum. Because so, um, you know, like you, when you go to some supply shops, like they won't even know what the decimal is. You call mm-hmm. them up, they're like, "What do you want?" And uh, I'm like, "I need like you know, quarter inch." Oh, uh, what gauge is that? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what gauge it is. It's yeah, you know, it's, or point one two five. That's an eighth inch. Oh, that's you know, I think that's like close to 11 gauge or something like that. Anyway, so, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting with nearly oh, no. irrelevant sheet metal details. 
No, this is all good stuff to know. Yeah. Um, I was not aware of that, but here's my pro tip. So I get on Amazon. I'm like, I want 063 aluminum sheet. And for like, let's call it 75 bucks. This sheet shows up. I didn't even bother looking at what brand it was. I just ordered it. I was like, yeah, two by four. That seems like enough for me to like make a few panels, what whatnot. Um, the price was right. Uh, so I get it and it's from all star performance. And sure enough, it's the shape that you, I mean, it's the size you need to make a dashboard. And so, uh, Perfect. I just use the aluminum box that came in to, uh, do my CAD and, uh, <laughs> awesome. you know, and then, uh, cut it out. I did some chain drilling for like the, uh, rounded part and, yeah. um, yeah, I think, and, and then I made a, a, an aluminum bender out of a bunch of old lumber. Um, nice. So kind of trapped it, you know, screwed everything yep. down real hard and then slowly bent that thing over. And then once I got it just where I wanted it, I trapped it again with a big two by six. And, uh, so anyway, it should be ready to go, uh, tomorrow when I go to put it in the car. But, uh, so yeah, so the Miata, instead of having a center console that kind of is a, a, vertical structure, you know, for all my gauges and switches and whatnot. Right. It's just going to be one big like dash across kind of the top of the dash bar, uh, and everything below that'll be nice and open and, um, free of wires and stuff. So I think it'll be a, a clean install, probably going to paint it matte black or something. So that doesn't, you know, distract me. Oh, you know what I like on those is, um, mm -hmm. actually let me give you a middle tip first. Um, think about if you can rolling that bottom edge, uh -huh. like just, just take that bottom edge and like on this, on the end of your metal workbench, mm -hmm. like knock it 90 degrees and then flatten it out. So it's mm -hmm. not a sharp edge at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. um, rather than like, cause even if you sand it or whatever, you've still got what can be a pretty sharp edge and an impact, but if you can roll yeah. that edge, it's safer. Um, and, um, and I really like the, um, the wrinkle black for that application. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, it almost it like does, bed liner. It does like that same. Yeah. Um, except I mean, it's like wrinkle black. You can get it. I don't know if you can get it at home Depot, but you can surely get it at AutoZone. Yeah. Um, cause that, that's where I've gotten it before. And as long as you, you know, just hit it with like the, um, that, um, self etching rust oleum mm -hmm. primer mm -hmm. and then, um, like clean, clean the aluminum first with, um, uh, just isopropyl alcohol will be good enough for that. Yeah. Hit it with that self etching primer. Mm -hmm. do that again with the isopropyl alcohol before you hit it with that wrinkle. And then mm -hmm. you can do just like two coats of that wrinkle and nice. it, it's matte and it like, it'll um, help cover up like imperfections when eventually like, you know, something bangs into it or something like that. And you won't be like, Oh, I've got this nasty crease in my dashboard. Right. And, like because of the, the texture of the wrinkle coat, it kind of hides some imperfections. Nice. Nice. All kinds it's of projects. guys do what they were doing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Very cool. Well, um, that's all I've got. So yeah, hopefully we'll get the dashboard in this weekend. I took tomorrow off too. So, you know, trying to burn some, some holidays. Um, yeah. so let's see then. Uh, so do you so, have a whole bunch of holes that you have to cut in it for gauges and switches and crap? I do. Yeah. yeah. That'll be, you know, time consuming, but I really think once I, once I mount everything up in there, I'll just yeah. be able to create a few quick disconnects to where I can pull the whole, cause basically the, all the electronics will be in the dashboard at that point. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to try to find some strategic points at which I can just disconnect the whole thing. Um, yeah. so I can really wire everything up outside of the car and mm -hmm. then just plug in stuff as I need to. Um, I think that'd be a lot easier to service. Oh, so. it totally is for yeah. the, um, for the center you know, that center panel area that we have on Miku that has the steam gauges on it and the switches, mm -hmm. right? Um, for this this time, as we continue to try and improve our process, we found a... Um, uh, Amphenol makes a, um, a far less expensive all-plastic version of like mm -hmm. a 48 connector, you know, round connector. Mm -hmm. So you can have all the wires going into that and all the wires coming out, out of that. So you just have that one disconnect to get all of it done. And I think I got that from, um, I can look if, if you're interested, but I think I got it at Waytech, but mm -hmm. it might've been from either DigiKey or Mouser. I mean, any of them have that same thing. Um, and then it uses, um, I mean, they're essentially the same pins and sockets like the, in the Deutsch, um, universe. Right. Um, 
but that way, like when we need to take that in and out, it it's now just on the whole center console um, above the the shifter is just on one circular connector, and half of it's mounted to the to the chassis, right? So all the stuff mm-hmm. coming out of the fuse box and everything goes into one side of that, and the other side is just that one connector. So you could just pull that one, and then the entire thing comes out for um, you know for ease of of repair. Um, and we did the same, a similar thing, except just with a 12 connector, um, you know, two by six Deutsch for the center console where the shifter is that has a whole bunch of switches on it. So when that needs to come out, um, you can just do that one thing. Cause that was one thing, you know, we always ran into, when we were trying to do electrical tr- troubleshooting on that car. It's just like, you know, constant, yeah. you know, this, this connector, that connector, this connector, that connector, and then you mm-hmm. got to make sure you get them all like getting them out is a pain, but even worse is when you're trying to put it back in to remember that you got everything connected and that they're all, you know, the right one to the right one and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. That sounds like some nice developments for that car then. Cause that will be a lot easier to service. Yeah. Especially yeah. in a pinch. Yeah. Yeah. I put the, um, I did put the scales under the car last weekend. Um, when I was doing a bunch of stuff, but I haven't, I haven't weighed it yet. Cause after mm. I got the seat in, then I was like, Oh, we need to put some weight in the driver's seat. Because we're we really are to the point. In fact, on Sunday, Ben and I may um, probably will align the car and do the cross weights on it. Um, and I'm really, really interested to see what our what our you know. Because I think we've got everything in it at this point. Um, what our yeah. race and weight will be. That's exciting. Uh, yeah. Nice. And you guys have scales now. Yeah, I've had scales for several. There you have. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, haven't you bought? I think you've borrowed them at some point, haven't you? I may have. I forget which ones I borrowed. I think I borrowed some from somebody <laughs> else. I don't know. I have fifty percent of a set of scales I, now. So that's right. We're, yeah. we're we've got scales all over the place. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, um, hey, let's get into the show. I wanted to do a twenty twenty three uh, year in review um, and uh, just kind of talk about. You know, our team did a lot of racing this year. It wasn't probably the biggest lemons racing year, uh, or or you know, tarp racing E36 racing year. But uh, everybody seems to be owning different cars now, and um, and then we've got an award for the for the 2023 Racer of the Year at the end of the show. Right. So, so stick around for that. So um, this is like our our listicle show. Like we're in the, mm-hmm. the part of the year where pretty soon all of the uh, all of the articles on the webs are going to just be 2023 listicles, your top 10 books of the year, your top 10 TV shows of the year, your top 10 blogs of the year, your top mm-hmm. 10 insurrections of the year, all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is basically the, the uh, top eight of the top 10 tarp racing drivers <laughs> uh, <laughs> year in review. These first couple don't really uh, aren't really in any order. And I'll, I'll cut right to the chase. Um, I found this to be fascinating. So I listed like some of our, um, let's say, uh, our drivers with the least amount of driving this year. And really, it's everybody that drove at Hallett in, really? in the Lemons race. Yeah. So everybody that drove at Hallett in the Lemons race basically just got that one race in for the year. Um, and I didn't really consider That's that. true. I mean, except for myself, I got I guess I got one more lemons race in later in the year. But uh, so you think about Eric Strawn. So I, I reached out to Eric. He said he didn't get any more racing in this year, but I do have to give him a shout out. Uh, I was worried about his stint at Hallett, and I and he went out there. He was in second place. I was like, man, just stay in second place. You know, let's just turn laps, and then you know we'll we'll keep working on him throughout the uh, throughout Sunday. And he went out there and just immediately passed the dude and got us into first place again and and crushed his stint. Um, so, uh, big shout out to Eric Strawn. Um, it was awesome to see everybody on the team at Hallett uh, just come out swinging with really good performances. Um, with really very, very little... regretful, I couldn't be there for that one. Yeah, kills me. Yeah. Um, Roland also uh, pretty much only did Hallett stuff this year. So Roland um, did go out and do an HPDE in his 350Z there. Uh, but then he, you know, had a stint in the Hallett race. Uh, did pretty good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so slow year for him. I know he's still building that 350Z. Really want to see it out on track next year. I feel like it was been a big building year for everybody. Everybody decided to build a yep. car this year. But, uh, 
but yeah, he's got good pace and uh, really excited to go battle with him. Um, he's looking at Super Touring 4. I think I really landed on Super Touring 5. I feel like going with a detuned engine is a lot better than a stressed out engine. Um, yeah. But I still think we'll be better on... on the, better on the consumables cost, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll be on, you know, hopefully we're on similar pace until, you know, he, he gets the car sorted out. But uh, we'll see. It'll be an exciting year next year to see how that shakes down. I think we'll do a, we'll probably yep. be, probably be battling out at, um, Hallett's comma races for a couple of rounds too. So. Sure. Then we got Dave. Dave's only race was Hallett, I think. Um, yeah. And I, I think he went and volunteered at that like road rally, but I don't think he participated in that. So, um, I think you're right. I think he, he drove that last year, but mm-hmm. you're right. I think he just worked comms at it this year. Yeah, but he's still been a huge help with the team this year and helping us sort out comms, and the guy's a genius, so big shout-out to Dave. It's always up awesome to to go racing with you. And uh, let's see. I'll, we'll we'll shout-out Nate. Nate again, Hallett only, like after, Nate a. after getting his uh, spec Miata last year and, and doing a little bit of racing. I think, you know, dad and work duties just kind of got in his way, but... Uh, I'm glad he didn't pass up Hallett, and he probably had the best average lap time um, for that event. And really, I mean, he ran out of gas, but no fault to his own. That was totally my call. So, um, <laughs> so he did a. I think I think a, that's just we just chalk it up to um, uh, rookie luck. Can we do that? Just rookie luck, just coming out swinging. Yeah, yeah, that's my excuse. He's got those, he's got those young man's reflexes. Oh yeah, the guy's like he's probably born in the two thousands. Yeah, these Swifties get such good reflexes. That's right. Like Taylor Swift is an old gal to him. Oh yeah, Grandma Swifty. <laughs> and I want to say if we're going in order of races this year, I don't know, Pat. I don't know if I'm tied with you or not. Why don't we go to you, Pat? Uh, you did Road America, right? I did Road America. Um, I did Barber. You did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was it, right? I was going to try and make it out to Road Atlanta, and that didn't work out. Didn't do Houston. Yeah, I think it's just those two, Barber and, and uh, Road America. Who'd you run Barber with? Was it the E30 or something? Yeah, I rode Troy's E30. All right, nice. Nice. Um, you, you were at two, you did Hallett and yeah, Hallett. And then we uh, won that IOE in the Mazda down in Houston. Oh, that's right. At Houston. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I don't think any other HPDEs this year, cause we had real estate issues. We had to box everything up for a good six months and that really put a wrench in my wrenching. So the monkey in the wrench, monkey in the wrenches. So this this has been a recap of folks that have been to the racetrack a couple times this year, and now to the heavy hitters, which is crazy, right? Like, yeah, how many years did we do four or five races? Yeah, four or five lemons races. I feel like I was up at Hallett every every other month last year, and yeah, then yeah, we've done four or five Hallett races a year. Excuse me. So yeah, weird. Next weird year we year. get back on the horse. That's right. Maybe it's too much podcasting. Is this podcast getting in our way. No, nah, that's know. not it. I think it's building community. That's right. But yeah, but early in the year, um, I started crewing for for Hunter in his super touring six efforts, and man, that guy he uh, you know, he was bound to determine to do some things in ST six this year. He had uh, he purchased an, a spec Miata uh, the year before that. Realized he didn't want to keep it spec. And so we started headed down to those NASA Texas races and he went through the whole experience of like first year of club racing, right? The tech and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And, um, you know, uh, ended up tricking out his car a bit, put a big 1.8 liter in it. Um, had to do that twice because of some issues, but, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun running with him, but yeah, so, um, he had goals of, of trying to win the championship. I think um, after he put his first 1.8 liter in the motor, he uh, he got rid of the belt 
unfortunately, in one of his races and uh, overheated the motor and yeah. and then just proceeded to keep that overheated for a couple more laps and uh, iron block, aluminum head, things didn't go well. So, yeah. um, well, it works out, unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, and I think it, he got a little discouraged there uh, and, and didn't, you know, didn't want to hop right back in it and just said, okay, let's just give this a break for a second, you know. Um, and so yeah, kind of just hard when you throw yeah. a whole bunch of money at a project and then immediately yeah. have to throw a whole bunch of money at it, like right away again, like that's, that's tough, you know, and that's, I mean, that's racing, right? I mean, we all know that yeah. and he knew it. I mean, he, Hunter had a great attitude about it, right? He's like, well, that's how it goes, right? I mean, that's why yeah. we, that's why we race cars that we don't have to drive to work because that's, that's racing, but it still sucks. Yeah. And it just. It goes to show you like how, how difficult it is to run a whole season, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to run every race and um, and how expensive it can be, you know, and, and how, yeah, it takes a lot of energy, I think, to, to pull that off. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he still ended up coming in uh, third in the NASA Texas Championship for, for Super Touring 6. Yeah. Um, a couple quick drivers in front of him. Um, but, but he was uh, having good results when, when the car was on track. He was getting good results. He was, yeah, and he was improving quite a bit. It was it was really cool to see him and Todd out there. They were both racing at the same time, and um, man, that that's so much fun to go out there and watch. A, uh, even just a, you know, one of those club races when you know you've got a dog in the fight, you know. Yep. Um, and then they both improved a ton over the year. Uh, I think it looks like my notes show that Hunter got in like uh, nine races, and you know that's with a couple races a weekend, so. Um, yeah, I guess that is one advantage of, um, of, of the sprint racing in this calculus, right? Like mm -hmm. you and I may have had, uh, equivalent amount of seat time in the mm -hmm. actual races, but, uh, mm -hmm. it's only two races. Whereas yeah. when you do four races a weekend or three races a weekend, it adds up fast. Yeah. And he got a bunch of other seat time as well. I mean, he's, he's really keeping those cars at, um, that, that car, I should say at ECR and Crescent. And so he's not afraid to just hop over there if he needs to shake the cobwebs off and yeah, and, you know, get some track time in. So um, he's really improved as a driver this year, and uh, you know you can tell. I mean, he keeps getting yeah. PBs every time he goes out. So that's cool to see. Um, I'd love that's to awesome. go battle against him at some point, but uh, I think he's going to be out next year. And the the NASA Texas schedule, as I mentioned before, is. Uh, really conducive to what he wants to get into, right? Uh, he can do mm -hmm. two races in uh, Decatur, two races in Crescent, um, you know, and it's just one a, weekend down or in weekends, Houston, I should say, two. I think it's one weekend in Houston. They usually but, do uh, that January weekend down there. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's just a month away for the yeah. Houston race. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. Um, but I feel like I'm running through these pretty quickly, but uh, here we are. But the big winner. This is where we need fanfare. We don't have any fanfare sound we effects. Need, uh, we need a uh, air horn, DJ sample air horn. We do need a DJ sample air horn. If we Blah, ever blah, edited blah, 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 this blah. podcast. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. Maybe I, mean, I can quickly add a soundboard app to my phone or something. No, no. We'll... We'll do the right thing and get a soundboard. But imagine an air horn. But here we are. Todd Spickard crushed it this year. I mean... Todd Spickard! Todd Spickard. Todd, we're giving you the 2023 Racers HQ Racer of the Year Award. Um, so, man, Todd just made great decisions. I think I think Todd made an initial very good decision. And then had the dedication and really I think he's just per very excited. You know, he's not burnt out on yeah. racing or anything. Um, and he just had a great time. So he ran, I think he ran every race in NASA, Texas this year. Uh, the only, the only drop I saw was I think the championships weren't, which were in like pit race or something. So he wasn't going to tow to that. Um, That'd be a and huge. That's yeah, crazy. yeah. And he raced uh, Lemon, so he got that IOE with us. He won uh, Halloween and Gasoline at the Hallett Race in his car, his road racing car. He drove Ozarks in his road racing car as a track right. day. 
And he went to um, Barber in, uh, in his daily. And he did Road America in a Camaro. That's right. Like the, that guy's a madman. That's right. Yeah. So we got we got our asses handed to us by Mr. Todd Spickard when it comes to racing participation. Yep, For, we did. So good on you, Todd. Way to show us how to be a real racer. I show he came in sixth place in the NASA Texas Championship. He might have gotten picked up third. This could have just be like raw results, and there's all kinds of math about being able to drop a certain number of races or something. So somewhere between three and six. Oh, you get it? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's not coming through. Nah, maybe like noise reduction. Oh, well. Yeah, that might be it. Oh well. Yeah. Again, yeah. I got. We gave you a, a very jaunty air horn, Todd. Yeah, we tried, Todd. We tried. This is the level of congratulations for the Racers HQ 2023 awards. Yeah. <laughs> Janky air horns. Um, Janky non-working air horns. Gracie the dog is very proud of you too, Todd. You should yes. know that. She came over Pat- here just to say that. Pat didn't even bother recording this in a studio. He's out back with a cigar and his dog. Very relaxed That's podcast right. tonight. That's right. Well, it's the year yeah. end. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind it's of reflective, be- contemplative. Yeah. It's a beautiful summer day in the middle of uh, winter down in Texas. That's right. That's right. It's, a, it's, a, it's as nice a summer day as you'll find in San Francisco. That sounds probably about right. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, so Todd, for your for your uh, championship efforts this year, we have designed a special Racers HQ 2023 Racer of the Year Award T-shirt. It looks kind of like the bumper sticker T-shirt, but we replaced podcast with 2023 Racer of the Year. Now here's nice. the awesome thing about this, Todd. You'll get your you'll up. It's in the mail, but. Uh, What's cool about this is if you feel like you got jacked, if you feel like, like, let's say you're a Hunter <laughs> Biederman and you think that you should have gotten that award, you can still go order it on our website. I don't care. Get your own 2023 Racer of the Year. Racers HQ 2023 Racers of the Year. So long as yeah. they pay for the t-shirt. Yeah. yeah, I don't care. Yeah. So congratulations to all the winners tonight, but especially Todd. Um, but, Maybe we uh, should like custom bedazzle his shirt or something. I like that. I could sign it. Wait, why? I don't know. He should it's, sign your T-shirt. He's the he champion. Gets, That's going to yeah. be worth something now. I'll buy two, send one to him to sign, have him send it back, That's frame right. it, talk to my accountant about you know capital's gain tax on that thing. Because maybe we, maybe we should get hero cards printed up for Todd. Oh, I like this the Todd baseball card. Yeah, and then and then he could sit at the sit at the table outside the garage in Houston, signing them for the kids when they come by. I can actually like kind four of, and six on Friday. I could see that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, on a similar note, though, like Todd has also done a very good job of getting into that CMC uh, community down in NASA, Texas. I mean, he's oh, yeah, he did the right thing. Like we talked about doing the right thing. He wouldn't, you know, he bought a very simple race car to a, a pre-built you know, like national built Mustang. Yeah. He didn't change a thing about it. And he just went and raced the car, right? Like, yeah, nobody else on this team has that, that level of discipline. Discipline is, is the exact word for that. So, um, so that was awesome. And then he went to the track and he, he wasn't shy. He made a bunch of friends, uh, and gets all the help he needs. And, has other people drive his car to, you know, see if it's a problem with, you know, with him or the, or the car, but yeah, the guys doing the right thing. So congratulations again, Todd. That's awesome. Two thumbs Let's, up for Todd Spickard. Any prediction who wins it next year? Well, it's, I mean, Todd or Hunter has the inside edge on it again, if they're going to do a full NASA season. If we're going to yeah. go, if, if that's our primary criteria is, uh, is just sheer number of, of races. Um, the rest of us would have a hard time keeping up with us. And, you know, I'm, I'm really hopeful that for the lemons team for, for Miku that we can do Barber, Hallett, Road America, 
in either Houston or road Atlanta. And the truth is yeah. that's probably Houston. If we go to road America is road America and road Atlanta are big toes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, since we're going back to road America as a series next year, we're going at the start of September. Um, so, you know, great, great weather time of year to be at road America. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Todd and I drove it in, in separate cars, but you know, we drove it last year, but the rest of you guys haven't, haven't ever been up there. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding at all. When I say that is a bucket list track. Um, it is yeah. so much, it is so fun to drive. Um, it is every bit as fun as you'd imagine it would be when you drive it in I racing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it represents, you know, very well, um, between the, the digital and the real life, but it's just, you know, it's so much more fun to do it in real life and it's a neat town. Um, wow. it's such a cool, such a cool venue. Um, it just did. Did you get to do the parade thing? Did you get to participate in the yeah. parade that you did? Okay. Todd was telling me he didn't yeah. get to cause they were fixing his exhaust or something, but yeah, that's right. No. So I had gone back, I was staying in town. Um, so I headed back, um, rather than like riding in the car, um, cause who wants to ride in a race car? Um, you know, if you're, unless you're in the driver's seat, right. That's kind of yeah. painful. Oh, um, yeah. so I went back into town and, um, and grabbed a beer and watched them come in and then, um, you know, and then walked around talking to people and, and hanging out. And it was, it was a really fun time. The only, I mean, what put a damper on it was the rain came in about 90 minutes into, um, you know, cause everybody kind of was parked in that there's, so Siebkins, the famous, um, kind of racing hotel there, mm-hmm. um, that has the, the bar next to it. Um, that, you know, all, all the famous racers have been in, it's covered in stickers and everything. Um, it's kind of on a, uh, not a cul-de-sac, but the, the, the street does a U around the, the building. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they just parked cars you know, on both sides of the street, all the way around it. And we're doing the BS judging there. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And so, I mean, a lot of people like had their families come to the race and, you know, there are people in town that came out to see the cars and like, it was, it was really pretty crowded. It was really cool. Like it was a fun time. And again, until, you know, the rain came in and of course at that time of year, the rain was like 45 degrees. So Mm -hmm. it really put a damper on it. Yeah. But, um, it was a, it was a really fun time and, and, um, yeah, I, I really hope we can, um, we can get a, you know, a good crew to head up there, um, for the race next year. Cause it really was, um, it really was just such a good time and such a cool track. And, um, Miku will be a great car at that track. Yeah. I have no question. I mean, yeah. I had a blast, you know, driving a, you know, what is a 67 or 69 Ford galaxy. Um, and y- you know, that's not like my style of car at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really used to driving Miku, um, or Miku's something like that. Miku's probably got better brakes. Yeah. yeah. Miku's definitely got better brakes. Um, a yeah. little bit better handling, uh-huh. but, um, yeah, that car was, it was a handful, but it was fun. You know, I mean, and it definitely is one of those cars that like, uh, you know, because it's so big, um, it's like, look, I'm going here. The rest of you figure out how to get out of the way of this thing, because I'm driving a 4,000 mm. pound car with drum brakes. Uh, right. The rest of you can figure that out. Right. And yeah. you know, just like we would, if we were in a, a class, a car around that car, it's like, yeah, I'll figure out my way around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh, I like it. Well, a bit of a short pod then. I mean, I, I, I guess I ran through all my content pretty quick. I was just so excited to talk about Todd Spickard and his big award. So Todd, it no, is we, a, we, it is a big award. We, we tried to get you like a big trophy that didn't pan out. And then Pat tried to 3d print something, but know that we care about you and this t-shirt will represent our efforts. That's right. Yeah. We could do a, a, a quick uh, formula one preview. Formula One preview, man. Okay. Formula One preview. Uh, I, I I've been hearing good things about the W15. That's exciting. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, apparently, when, like, I don't know. Ha- Hamilton just had something to say about it. He went to the factory and was very encouraged. So maybe they're just trying to divert news away from uh, Susie and Toto's drama. But <laughs> The stupidity of that drama? Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is full-on silly season news right there. That's what that is. Um, I mean, is there any, is there, I guess, you figure Mercedes has got to get it figured out at some point, right? I mean, everyone thought they would this year, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, Ferrari was on the verge of actually being able to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, Aston was so much better for the first part of the season than we thought it was going to be. Right. And then they just couldn't keep it up. But McLaren kind of swapped ends with them on that, right? Like, we yeah. could really see... I don't know that, I mean, Mercedes, I don't know, Matt, you know, Mercedes and Ferrari, if they, if they do it right, they could contend with Red Bull next year. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's still fascinating to, to see who comes in second with that much competition up front, you know? Um, yeah. It's, I've been, I've been hearing some things that make me a little sad, like these, like the teams that are lower down the ranks, just how they're like really not investing in the sport at all because they've just really? got a, they've just got a great investment at this point. Right. Um, they, you know, they have basically like a franchise seat in this yeah. growing sport and you know, they're spending what 400 million on a, on something that's got billions of dollars of value to it. Cause it's, right. you know, a slot and you, know, you look at Andretti just trying to get a slots, you know, pretty painful. Right. Um, when is it that so, their car supposed to come in? Is it 25? I don't know. I think the big change is 26. So they're going to wait for that? Yeah. I think so. I mean, that would make sense. But, you yeah. know, Formula One doesn't make sense most of the time, so I wouldn't put that on them. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much it makes sense in the next 10 years. But we'll just enjoy. But who's not investing? I guess I hadn't heard that. I mean, other than the folks I wouldn't think. But, you know, like... The, um, like Williams had a much better back half of the season this year than, I mean, than they have since like, you know, like Senna and Prost were racing for him. Yeah. I guess I'm thinking more about Haas and maybe, um, yeah. Alfa Romeo. Um, yeah, that whole Alpha thing's going to be interesting, right? Cause Audi doesn't come in until 26. They're mm-hmm. losing Alpha as a sponsor after this year. I've heard that there's supposed to be some big announcement for like who's going to be their their sponsor, but it's going to be a Sauber again, right? Yeah, I, I think they'll struggle that. for a while. I mean, yeah. some more, but again, they don't really have to invest a whole lot. They need to show up to races and you know yeah. play the game, and uh, so I don't know. It's kind of interesting, but um, definitely try not to put those guys on my fantasy league. <laughs> yeah, has um. Did any, are we going to have any driver changes for next year? Not yet. That's my understanding. That's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, when it could be. When was the last time that happened? Never. Like, not in 60 years or something. Like, Yeah, I can't remember it. I mean, I don't know. If, there, if there's even, have there been 60 years? I don't know. Well, yeah, because they were racing before the war, right? Yeah. But. I, which, I mean, World War II. Not every succeeding mm-hmm. war that could be referred to as the war. Oh, the war. Yeah. Yeah. Like before like Desert Storm. Antio and those guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess these, these, uh, posters I have, there's Monaco 35. So I don't know. So art has a practical purpose too. It can remind us of, of events of the past. Yeah. Uh oh. Lost. Lost Mulry there. All right, Mulry's back. Wow, that was weird. Yeah, you just out, huh? You know, Mulry, uh, we don't need to get too much into philosophical uses of art, but have you ever heard of SEPTED? Uh, crime prevention through environmental no, design and control or something like that. Uh, so basically, like, there's been all these studies done. That's if a you, very big brother. Yeah, if you put, like, a big mural on the side of the wall and it's got a big eye on it, People don't rob stuff. Really? Yeah. And so there's all That's these true. like 
crime prevention techniques using, you know, graphic design and, and other forms of design. Um, but yeah. No, so, I've yeah. never heard of that. I've heard of like, you know, the idea of like playing, uh, you know, classical music at the, mm-hmm. at the seven 11 so that like, mm-hmm. you know, people won't want to hang out there cause you know, yeah, they did that. They did that on our corner and sometimes they just play like really wonky, like, like circus music, you know, just you know kind of what everyone what everyone wants at at their neighborhood convenience store is calliope yeah and it really it just sounds like a train wreck when you you know drive through bumping some trap music you know (laughs) it's it's, it's a real mess (laughs) anyway i like stuff yeah well i'm gonna go try to digest this terrible uh cheeseburger i ate mr mulry um but uh, I've really enjoyed podcasting with you tonight. And, Me too. Uh, I'm I'm disappointed that it's running shorter than usual. This is like one oh. of my favorite parts of the week. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. You got to take take us out on a on a long shout out. You got why don't you shout out everybody you want to shout out for 2023? How about that? Well, I don't think this is our last podcast of 2023, but I will do oh, okay. that. Um, so I'd like to. T- you know, it's funny when I was driving home from work today, I was thinking about. Um, the pod tonight and I don't know how many we've done this year um, kind of with getting it, you know, up and on its feet. Mm-hmm. You probably mm-hmm. have a better idea, um, yeah. but I would guess, you know, more than a dozen, maybe fewer than 20. Is that in the range? Oh, I think it's definitely in the 20 range. I mean, it's been every yeah. other weekish, you know, a couple yeah, of that's skips. true. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my, my shout outs are, I mean, in addition to you and the great Nate Adler, um, you know, like all of the great, you know, fun guests that we've had, you know, like Jill and Neil and, you know, of course, all of our guys, Dave and Hunter and Roland and Todd, of course. And um, I, th- I think Eric, yeah, Eric did a pod, right? I think we've had everybody on the team on the pod at some point, right? Yeah. Um, except maybe Todd Wyant. Um, and Nick's hasn't been on either. Um you know, we had JT on and, um, like it's been, it's been fun having, you know, and then other non lemons guests. I know, I don't remember those as, as well yeah. as I do the lemons folks. Cause I know them, I yeah. know them better, but, um, it's been a lot of, I've had a really good time doing this this year. I love, I love just getting on here and, and, um, uh, talking with you all about all this stuff. It's a fun time. Awesome. Yeah. I really enjoy it too. It's a great, uh, great break and, uh, great to, hang out with the homies that normally we just get to see every other month or so at the track. Right. So, um, some of my favorite people for sure, but yeah, I just did a, I did some quick math. I think we're around 30 for the year. So that's no pretty kidding. good. Yeah. It's pretty good production. Yeah. That is thank you. Good production. Thank you, Todd. And, and I, or thank you, thank you, Pat. And I <laughs> echo everything that Pat just said. I, uh, I really do appreciate all of our guests this year. Um, it's been really cool. I really do feel like we'll, we're building community, um, and uh, and really, if nothing else, archiving some great stories, some great times, and uh, some cool tips uh, for for building race cars and, and going racing. So, so and that's building a really spectacular playlist for of hype yeah. music. Hype music playlist. Yeah, I was we've talking to us. We've got mm-hmm. We've got. Do we have uh, like a pan flute song on there yet? I don't think. Does I anyone have, have Zamfir as their hype music? Uh, no, but we could, you know, uh, hit me up later with that, uh, and I'll I'll try to get it on the <laughs> on the playlist. I don't feel like multitasking right now, but uh, but yeah, we've got I got fourteen songs on there, and I know I've I've done a poor job of archiving everyone's uh, suggestions. So, um, but yeah, we've had some great suggestions. It's always cool to see what uh, what people come up with. Um, but yeah, good. I, that that Jill podcast was a, a great one. I feel like, uh, yeah, we've had some some real bangers. Oh well, yeah, and you mentioned that uh, we had Troy came on this year after yeah. they won at NOLA, right? Because that was the instigation for the Jill podcast. Yeah, the Jill cast. Yeah, I'm I'm working on a big big guest for our last pod of the year. Uh oh, big guest, last pod. I like it. It's exciting stuff. Use that a little bit, and then of course, if it doesn't pan out, then. Um, I just have egg on my face. That's fine. What else is new? <laughs> yeah. We, it's, it's great to promise stuff and not deliver on podcasts. Nobody listens or <laughs> remembers a podcast yeah. or life. 
Yeah. But that brightest. is always my favorite part about like of like you know when you listen to racing podcasts or I mean mm-hmm. any kind of sporting podcast and people are making like you know bold predictions about what's going to mm-hmm. happen you know like mm-hmm. yeah you know, there is no way that Porsche is ever going to win an endurance race with that nine six three right and then you know like the next week mm-hmm. it's like oh they did one two at Laguna Seca or something like that and then there's because there's never any accountability for it like it's easy to make big yeah. strident declarations on a podcast and then like have no accountability for it whatsoever oh yeah that's how that's how we make the big bucks mr mulry um i did see you brought up porsche i saw an interesting infographic the other day on um depreciation yeah the porsche 911 and the porsche cayman are like the best from like a you keep your money like the best depreciating cars you can buy um whereas like BMWs, mm-mm. Uh-uh. they're not as bad as a Maserati Quattroporte, which is the worst depreciating car <laughs> you can buy. But that uh, doesn't surprise me about the about the Porsches. You know, since I've had that Boxster, uh, you know, I'm I'm keeping my eye on the next Porsche that you know will be, mm-hmm. um, that will be mine. I've I've sort of um, committed myself to not re Porscheing until Caroline's out of college. Um, yeah. But um, but that doesn't mean I'm not like, you know, in about seventy Facebook groups of you know nine eleven buy sell club and mm-hmm. Boxster buy sell club and you know Dallas Porsches and and whatever. Um, it is it is really interesting to see which ones hold their value and which ones are kind of dipping. Like right now, I think the no and no big surprise. Like I think the absolute bottom of the well for modern era Porsches is the, um, I, I can't ever keep the 911 numbers straight, you know, like which one's a 993 and a 996 and a 997. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know the eras, but the, the fried egg 911. Mm-hmm. That's a 996. That's a, is it? Mm-hmm. I thought the 996 was about to back around headlight. Anyway, okay. I said, I don't know. And I'm not going to try and correct you because I'm probably wrong. But you know what I'm talking about the fried egg oh, yeah. 911, um, like especially like the um, just the Carrera versions, the non-turbo versions. Yeah, um, those are those are probably the at the most affordable level of of non non junk level Porsches. Like you know, not the the 914 that's been sitting in a swamp for 40 years or something like that. That's a different a different level of Porsche. Yeah. Is that where is that the direction you would lean? Is like uh, lots of bang for buck nine nine six, or would you go back with like the Cayman style? Or you know, I I um, so that's the the next Porsche, like the last Porsche, is one hundred percent not a track car, right? Mm-hmm. So all the stuff that like oh I could track this too goes out the window because I'm not going to do that with mm-hmm. with a car of that value. Um, And, um, so I really want a convertible again. I love Mm. driving convertibles. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, what I would, I mean, what I would love, but I don't think I'm going to, um, want to pay for is, um, like either a nine, nine, seven or whatever is more recent than that. Um, you know, a turbo cabriolet. Okay. Um, but those are crazy money. Yeah. Um, but you know what I found with the when I had the um, the Boxer S the seven eighteen Boxer S was that was just a, a four cylinder turbo motor and that mm-hmm. was definitely um, quick enough for me. So um, once you know Porsche went to putting um, turbos on everything, um, mm-hmm. you know I could even I could even do a Carrera convertible and I think I'd be happy enough with it. I mean it's a it's a commuter car essentially, so you know it's not like I'm looking to get anywhere super fast. Like the fun part is the first three seconds before you're at the speed limit. So, yeah, I I think you'd uh, be okay with pretty much any drop top modern Porsche. I mean, you took me on a ride in that 718 and it's plenty fast for me for sure. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I'd, I'd take another Boxster. Um, I'm really interested to see what they do with the next gen Boxster. Um, platform because that's the one that's supposed to be you know the ev boxster 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'll Go be ahead. really interested. To, yeah, I'll be really interested to see what they do that because I think, um, you know, that's that car is never going to be my like road trip car. Um, mm-hmm. And EVs, you know, when I was when we were at the Barber race last year, I drove out to Atlanta and back to pick up a part for Anton at at Summit in um, in Atlanta to get the the uh, now departed white five four four on the track, and um, I had rented a a Model Three from Hertz, um, mm-hmm. and it's a great it's a great car, but it was you know it added probably an hour to that trip um having to charge it up you know on the way to atlanta and on the way back from atlanta um you know yep. i mean and it was fine it was fine as an on the road car but like until you can get a lot more range out of those batteries i think the ev is is not the the best road trip car so this one's this car would primarily be an in town car and in that if that's the case then i think the ev is really interesting and um, I like, you know, of course, Porsche a lot of times does prototype road cars. Like I'm thinking like the first Boxster that didn't look, the production model didn't look a whole lot like, or not enough like the prototype version mm-hmm. for my taste. But, um, uh, you know, the prototype of that, what is it? Mission E or whatever that, um, Oh, right. Yeah. That thing's awesome looking. Yeah. That thing was hot looking mm-hmm. and that, you know, supposedly kind of the, um, you know, a semi prototype for the the EV Boxster Cayman. Oh, um, okay. And if it comes out looking like that, like I'd be really interested in that. So, yeah, I've always wanted a 911, but um, I, I'm really curious about that that EV Boxster. That's uh, awesome. I would I would definitely. And the timing on that should, you know, work out about like what I'm looking at in terms of when I'd be self eligible to put another one of those in the stable anyway so nice you heard it here first guys we'll see mullery's getting an ev boxer all right <laughs> hope hopefully that's the case but you know the thing is like he i always feel like you don't want the first year of any car mm-hmm. right like just historically the first year is always the most problematic or any year tesla apparently boom shots fired tesla well you saw that that recall the other day right oh yeah yeah, like I don't know if I'd ever Tesla buy this. Ever sold? Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever buy a self-driving. It was self. It was for self-driving, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The entire yeah. premise of the of the uh, the novel Robo Apocalypse. Yeah, Robo Apocalypse, huh? Oh yeah, it's a good book. Yeah, very okay. entertaining. But yeah. that's how the Robo Apocalypse starts: is all the self-driving cars. Um, run themselves into bridge abutments and stuff to kill the occupants. Ah, makes sense. Yeah. Smart robo apocalypse. That's right. The, that's the low hanging fruit. Right. And, um, but, uh, no, I, I love, I really do like Tesla's. I'm, I've got a deposit in on, a, um, you know, like the hundred dollar deposit on the cyber truck. Um, Oh, really? Yeah. I put one in, you know, like on the first day, right. Okay. When those opened up, just, and and I'm intrigued. I mean, it's it's a really interesting concept. I I look forward to actually, you know, seeing one in the flesh and then making up my mind about whether I really want one or not. Mm. But it's sort of the same dilemma. Like, you know, that would have to replace the suburban. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, we use the like for race purposes. I'm not sure, you know, they talk about oh, it can tow, you know, like however many thousand, you know, tens of thousands of pounds. Mm-hmm. But how far are you gonna be able to tow? on a charge with that not, thing. Not far. I think the real world testing on like the, uh, F one fifty lightning. Yeah. You know, it's a significant drop in range. So I, I feel like I'd have to stop and charge to get to Hallett is my understanding. Which oh my gosh. Me, from Oklahoma city to Hallett. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't think we're there yet, especially for towing something like a, a race car, like maybe if it's a farm trailer or something. Um, yeah. So, but I think, I mean, it's, it's improving, right? Like this is stage one. Um, yeah. So just, so I've, you know, I've thought space. about that. Like the, you know, cause you know, one of the things we've certainly talked about as a team is like, you know, should we even be towing with, you know, our own, 
you know, our own daily driver type vehicles on mm -hmm. our trailers, wouldn't it be better just rent a tow vehicle yeah. and do that that way and then not have that wear and tear? And if that's the case, then okay, a Cybertruck, you know, works. Yeah. And realistically, like how many times a year is that a problem? I mean, I'd love for it to be a problem yeah. five times a year, but you know, this year it was like, I didn't tow anywhere this year. No, you probably just moved the car around a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, but this year, I, I, but this year's not a good basis for that. I mean, this was a with with um, us deciding to swap chassis on Miku, which you know was definitely the right thing to do. But um, it has taken longer than maybe not longer than I anticipated, but longer than I hoped. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be worth it in the end. I mean, we're going to have a better, lighter car that'll be easier to troubleshoot. But um, yeah. But I miss I miss racing with you guys. I need your oh, musk. Sure. I miss your musk, Ron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get back on track. We got this. Got to get a, got to get an Anchorman reference in when you can, right? I like it. Great movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah. Thanks to all of our listeners this year. Um, Pat, thanks to you so much. I mean, you've been, uh, you know, just an anchor for this whole podcast. I mean, you haven't missed many of them and the ones you did probably, you know, weren't worth showing up to. So, um, well, appreciate thank you. your encouragement, but appreciate I, your encouragement. yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I'm glad you got it going. Um, and it's been, I think it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun for, for me to just, you know, like I said, it's one of the highlights of my week is getting to hang out with you guys and just, you know, hang out and yeah. talk about stuff that we all enjoy talking about anyway. Heck yeah, man. I like it. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Um, Enough of want... this love in back to sarcasm. I know, right. Uh, if you want to check us out and all of those episodes are all available at racershq.com and, and you can go buy yourself a 2023 racer of the year shirt, maybe even before Todd gets his. So maybe you're going to get right. the no, jump on. None of your friends will know that you're not actually the racer of the year. I mean, unless yeah. they listen to the podcast. Yeah, that might be an uh, yeah. Maybe maybe this isn't the way we promote this because then if I tell people to go listen to the podcast <laughs> and they find out you're a liar, then uh, I don't know. I'm not I'm not thinking this through, Maury. But uh, <laughs> these aren't even unintended consequences. These are foreseeable consequences. We're doing it live. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, thanks everybody for listening this year, and uh, and we will see you at the track. Bye everybody. Bye. -bye.